We give you praise. Hallelujah. It's already done. Yes, Lord. You've made everything ready. Yes. You've made everything ready. Yes, Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, you are good. Yes, and your mercy endures forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to your Hallelujah. name. Hallelujah. You reign continuously. Forever and ever you reign. Ancient one, you reign. Ancient one, you reign. Father, we thank you. Can we have our seats? Amen. While we are seated, I just want us to listen to this song before we go on in the message. Media, are you ready? Bring grace to us. Speak life to us. Grand understanding. Help us to come to a place of oneness and alignment with the heart of the Father. That all that we have experienced this year indeed will make sense. It will make sense because all things work together for good. For them that love God and are called according to His purpose. And we believe that we have been called by you, and we are yours. Spirit of God, teach us, lead us, help us to see you in all of it. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Good morning, church. Good morning, church. We bless the Lord for another Thanksgiving Sunday. In fact, the last Thanksgiving Sunday in the year 2022. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It's my humble privilege to be bringing us the word this morning. Uh, really, this year, 2022, for many of us, have been very interesting. We've gone through... Periods of ups, periods of lows, periods where you've questioned whether you are still in faith because you are not exhibiting faith. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And you've also trusted God even to the point where you have not even seen answers to prayers. But yet, you remain trusting. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. This morning, I believe the Spirit of God will have us focus on the Word. And by that, I mean focus on our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, in the book of Hebrews, chapter 12, verse 2, we say He's the author and the finisher of our faith, right? Right? Am I the only one in this room? And by that, we mean that he is the source, he is the starter, he is the perfecter, he is the one that initiates us into it, and he is the one that helps us to complete it. Praise the Lord. I think over the course of the week, our senior pastor posted something. Okay, that was after the uh, crossover service. Oh, sorry, crossover, month crossover meeting or prayer meeting. Well, it's a service as well, a prayer service, all right? So she posted something about finishing strong. And indeed, the Lord has helped us. Amen? Amen? Where we are right now is different from where we started the year with. If you are with me, can I see your hand? If you believe that for yourself, no, seriously, if you believe that for yourself, can I see your hand up? That where you were, at the beginning of the year is different and markedly so to where you are right now. You have improved. 
things have changed. There has been a lot of development. There has been character development by the trials that you have gone through. There have been character development by the disciplines that you have had to go through, by the unanswered prayers that you have had to go through. Praise the Lord. And also by the answered prayers that you have had. Praise the Lord. And all of this is by the grace of God. This morning we'll be looking at the topic, Jesus, our source of grace. Jesus, our source of grace. Let's open to the book of John chapter 1. John chapter 1. Earlier I quoted the scripture from the book of uh, Hebrews chapter 12 verse 2. Talking about Jesus being the author and the finisher of our faith. And indeed, we have looked at the topic faith for six months, there about different dimensions. Uh, pastors have brought them to us or brought the word to us by the Spirit of God. And indeed, faith is what I would say domiciled or resting on the grace that has been made available by the one who is grace himself, Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen? Because indeed, Paul said, Apostle Paul said, that if Jesus did not die, if he did not come, if he did not do all that he did, so all that we are doing, we are of most, all men rather, most miserable, right? And our faith is of no value. If we say we have faith in God, there is no substance to it. There is no evidence to it. Praise the Lord. But we bless the Lord because he came, sent by the Father, he died, he rose again, he ascended, and he has given us the victory. Praise the Lord. John chapter 1 verse 14. John chapter 1 verse 14. Media, are you with us? Okay, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Verse 16. Verse 16. John bought, no, 16, thank you. And of his fullness we have all received what? Grace for grace. And of his fullness we have all received and grace for grace. Grace, verse 17. And for the law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Grace and truth came through who? Jesus Christ. So here, the Bible helps us to understand by the Spirit of God that grace and truth actually came through our Lord Jesus. Indeed, he is the source of grace. And... Um, Having to focus or reflect on this year, all that we have gone through, all that we have experienced, we can indeed say that Jesus has been with us. Our Lord has been with us all through. Now, let's delve into the message proper. Open to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8. It's a popular scripture. For by grace you have been saved through faith, not of works, Right? For by grace you have been saved through faith, that not of yourselves. Some other transition, not of works. It is the gift of God. It is what? The gift of God. And if you look at what the word grace actually means, we know generally by the uh, uh, interpretation of the, of the uh, scriptures, looking at the, this passage, looking at the um, Amplified Classic or the Amplified Version, you will see in bracket, unmerited favor. And even in the concordance, it will have their unmerited favor. But in another dimension, grace has been described as the influence, all right? The divine presence of our Lord Jesus or our Father in any situation, for any situation. Praise the Lord. Let me quickly open to how the concordance puts it here, so that you can actually see that's the concordance for interpreting grace, that's carries. 
It says it's a spiritual condition. It is an atmosphere. It's an atmosphere of one governed. That is, each, each and, uh, you and I governed by the divine presence of the Father. The divine presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. The divine presence of his spirit. So when you see a person and you say the grace of God is upon him or upon her, or is ministering or is doing things in grace or by grace. As believers, that is our, I mean, that's where we are. That's who we are. We are prayed by grace, right? Praise the Lord. And in essence, we are saying that that person has the Spirit of God upon him. That person is operating according to uh, the dictates of the Spirit of God. He is operating not by his own flesh or wisdom, but rather by the help of the Spirit of God. Praise the Lord. Now, going deeper, of course, um, we said earlier that grace being or merited favor, which is true, uh, has been what we have known for so long uh, and has been interpreted or taught to us. And then the Lord Jesus Christ showed several examples while he was here on earth of what it is to be living by grace. We said he is the source, right? So it's only right, it's only right for him to teach us what grace is all about. To live out that graceful life that we might learn of him, that we might come to understand what it means to live by grace. Praise the Lord. So no one by himself or herself is actually deserving of grace. We know that. Ephesians 2 8 lets us know clearly that we have been saved by grace. Through what? Faith. That word faith comes again. So the word faith is hinged on the provision of grace. Praise the Lord. If you have experienced grace this year, can I see your hand? And indeed, you have experienced that grace all because you have moved at a certain level of faith. And moving at a certain level of faith will give you that level of grace. Let's note that down. Moving at a certain level of faith will, I mean, you will, uh, you will live at a certain level of grace. Praise the Lord. Or you experience a certain level of grace at that level of faith. Praise the Lord. What you have faith for is what you receive. Amen? Amen. You are not working for it, remember. It is by faith. That is the grace, right? So it only means that when you experience, we've talked about different levels of faith. We've talked about us growing in faith. So the only essence why you will grow in faith is so that grace can abound. You can experience more grace in what you are doing. Praise the Lord. What the Lord has put in your hands, how the Lord has instructed you, to the level that you, or the, I mean, sometimes... Okay, let, let, let's leave that. Let's leave that. So no one by himself or herself is deserving of grace based on what they have done or not done. Amen. No one. The Bible says it is the gift of God. So it's something that you are freely given. You didn't work for it, but you were freely given. There are things, I mean, it's just by saying, uh, ask and you will receive. You didn't actually say you are working out that gift being given to you. Praise the Lord. Yesterday, a lot of us, those who are here, if you are not here, Brother Tunde has said, be comforted. Right? And indeed, be comforted. The Lord is with you. Amen. Gift exchanges were... We are done yesterday, right? If you received the gift yesterday, can I see your hand? If you received the gift yesterday, can I see your hand? Hmm. Okay, some people receive gifts. Grace for grace. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Now, the truth is this. Did you work for that gift? Did you work for it? Did you ask for it? God, in the same way, has given us the Lord Jesus Christ as a gift. 
sending him to do the ultimate sacrifice. Not minding whether we have asked for it or whether we deserve it. But then he still gave us all the same. But we can only access him. That is all that he has done by what? Faith. By believing that he actually did it for us. Praise the Lord. So when grace comes to you, I mean, there's a, there was a story of a man, or oh, sorry, a lady who was in a flood and her house was being overwhelmed by the flood. And she was praying, Father, please save me. Save me from this flood. I don't want to die. At least not yet. And someone came around in a canoe. Come, jump into the canoe. Let's go. And the woman said, no, I'm waiting for my father to save me. Praise the Lord. I'm what? Waiting for my father to save me. And then the man rode away. An helicopter came. Woman, climb the rope. I said, no, I'm waiting for my father to save me. And then the helicopter left. Unfortunately, the water overwhelmed her. She died. And then when she met the father, she was, father, I prayed. Save me. Why, what, what happened? Why didn't you save me? He said, I sent you a boat. You did not accept. I sent you an helicopter. You did not accept. What else would you want me to do? Now, Jesus came in the flesh. Amen? Jesus came in flesh and blood. And then the people he came to, the Jews, indeed they, if despise was another, there's another word worse than despise or reject. They did worse to him. Praise the Lord. Now, going by what they were expecting. You see, our mindset, our understanding of what grace is all about needs to be enhanced. And that can only come by our understanding of the Word of God with respect to the ministry of our Lord Jesus Christ. He said in that verse, uh, verse 8 of chapter 2 of Ephesians that not of yourselves... Most times, we have tried to do things or help God, in quote. You want to have a physical uh, involvement in the process, right? And all of us, one way or the other, have testified this year that some way or the other, we have tried to help process. True or true? Nobody's answering. You have tried to help process. When I say help process, I mean you've prayed concerning something, and somehow you have not seen it, and then you are beginning to permutate and combinate alternatives, options. Maybe this is what God is saying. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So the mindset of man still is limited in receiving God's grace. Why? Because we are asking, why will he be that free? I don't have to do anything. Indeed, if somebody gives you a gift, if not for the fact that we have talked about us bringing gifts for one another, and um, maybe you go to the office tomorrow or some of us in our business places, and some, somebody brings a pack to you and says, this is a gift for you. What will go on in your mind? What's happening here? You begin to ask questions, especially when it is uh, opposite gender. Hallelujah. Hmm. The women are the ones saying amen most. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. At least, when I was still courting my wife, and I gave her gifts, 
by the grace of God. Hmm. She knew my agenda. Praise the Lord. We humans have limited grace to the same thing. What is the catch? Why is this free? Generally, you suspect any gift that is being given to you, especially when you have not done anything. Praise the Lord. Especially what? When you have not done anything to deserve it. We want to earn what we get, right? You work for money. You do business for money. So when somebody gives you something for free, you are like, okay. So what do you want me to do with it? Do you want me to deliver it for you? Or I should keep it for somebody? You don't see it yourself as being deserving. Praise the Lord. Somebody pays money into your account, and you are calling the person, sir, or ma, or bros, alpha, this money, what is it for? Praise the Lord. And not of yourselves. We might say that, yes, this, this, this is not my experience. In fact, I'm saved by grace and I've taken it hook, line, and sinker. I believe in God and all of that. But truthfully, if you reflect, there are certain times within the year, within your life, that you have question some graces that have come to you. You have questioned some helps that have come to you. Praise the Lord. You have not seen, or conversely, you have not seen yourself deserving of some things. Probably because you feel that you are not there yet, or you feel that something has not happened, or you have not done anything to bring this into uh, a reality for you. Praise the Lord. And then we begin to allow doubt. We begin to allow the enemy, the devil, to sow suspicion, to sow uh, a negative impression about yourself on yourself. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So in the Old Testament, God, of course, that's where we, we start creation from the book of Genesis. The operations of grace was based on God's purpose. The operations of grace was what? Based on God's purpose and decision, and still is. Moses in Exodus chapter 33, verse 19, had an encounter with the Lord. Let's open to it, Exodus chapter 33, verse 19. And in that encounter, the Lord was speaking with him, and he told him, I want to see you. Jesus, uh, sorry, Moses told him, I want to see you. I want to have a visual representation of you. Media, can you help us out? Exodus 33, verse 19, I said. And at some point, God told him, see, let's go to verse uh, 18. Go to verse 18. This is where Moses said, please show me your glory. We know that song. I see the cloud, I step in. Right? I want to see your glory like Moses did. And indeed, he saw God's glory. But God told him one thing. He said, I will make all my goodness pass before you. And I will proclaim the name of the Lord before you. And I will be what? Gracious to whom I will be gracious. And I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. That immediately suggests that you don't have a part to play in deciding whether you receive grace or not. He has given it to you through our Lord Jesus Christ. In their own times, they did not have Jesus right there in physical flesh. 
all right, because the time for redemption or reconciliation of man back to God had not come. So each man who had an encounter with the Lord had a separate encounter and experience. For Moses here, he had an encounter with the Lord, and the Lord spoke expressly about this. He said, I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and I will be compassionate to whom I will be compassionate. But right now, right here, in this season, we have the opportunity to say we have been saved by grace. Through what? Faith. So in other words, it's still not general. When I say it's still not general, he has made it open, he has made it clear, but it's still not general. Why? Because you still have to say you believe. You still have to say you have faith to have benefit of that grace. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And in various places, I mean, looking at Jesus speaking to the people in Luke chapter 4. Let's open to Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4 verse 16. Luke 4 verse 16. This was after the Lord Jesus uh, started his ministry and he went to Nazareth. Excuse me. The Bible says he went to Nazareth. He had just concluded temptation, a temptation bout with the enemy. That is, with the devil. The devil had just concluded tempting him for 40 days or thereabouts. He had fasting, and then he was tempted three times by the enemy. In verse 16, he says, when he came to the village of Nazareth. Now, before verse 16, in verse 14, the Bible says that Jesus returned to Galilee, right? With the Holy Spirit's power, reports about him spread quickly through the whole region. He taught regularly in their synagogues and was praised by everyone. Can we have, okay, yeah, the New King James Version, thank you. Verse 14, verse 14. And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit to Galilee, and news of him went out through all surrounding region. And he taught in their synagogues, being glorified by all. Praise the Lord. Now, the expression of the grace upon him gave glory to God and to him. Amen? Now, the result and outcome of grace is to return glory to God. You can put that down. The result and the outcome of grace being given to each and every one that grace has been given to, in whatever form, and in whatever experience that you have had uh, to, to express it, all right, must bring glory to God. Where that is not in place, then grace is being misused. Probably by, uh, on another time, we would have opportunity to talk about that with respect to the misuse of grace or the responsibility uh, of grace or over grace. Because each and every one of us, one way or the other, have a responsibility on the grace of God upon our lives. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. All right, so let's move on. Here in Luke chapter 4, verse 16, he says, So he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. Remember, he says, Where he had been brought up. They know him from childhood. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read. Verse 17. And he was under the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. So go on to verse uh, 29. Verse 29. Okay, no, verse 27. Sorry, 26 rather. 26. Thank you. Okay, 25, sorry. I'm looking for where it starts, the story of Elijah. Yes. But I tell you truly, many widows were in Israel in the days of Elijah. When the heaven was shut up, three years, six months, and there was a great famine throughout all the land. 26. But to none of them was Elijah sent except to Zarephath, in the region of Sidon, to a woman, of, to a woman who was a widow. And many lepers were in Israel in the time of Elisha, the prophet. And none of them was cleansed except Naaman, the Syrian. 
28. So all those in the synagogue, when they heard these things, were filled with wrath. Why were they filled with wrath? Why was that indignation brought up in their minds towards the Lord Jesus Christ? Go to verse 24, please. Verse 24. Okay, verse 23, sorry. Thank you. And he said to them, you will surely say this proverb to me. Physician, heal yourself. Okay, no, verse 22. Go to verse 22. Let's start from there. So all bore witness to him and marveled at the gracious words. In other words, grace was oozing from his lips. Praise the Lord. Grace was what? Coming out from his mouth. And he said, uh, which proceeded out of his mouth, and they said, is this not Joseph's son? Now, there is a way you can say that. I mean, they only asked a question. Is this not Joseph's son? Right? In other words, wow. It could have been this way. Wow, this man has grown. Or the boy we used to know, he has grown. Grace has been given to him. Wow, praise the Lord. But rather, what they meant by that fueled indignation within them against him. Such that they could not understand why he would have moved to the level he is right now, knowing him, and he's saying all that he said, with respect to the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, he has anointed me to do this, to do that, to do this, to do that. And they could not understand why he would also say, all through, I mean, from verse 23 down, go to verse 23, you will surely say this proverb to me, physician, in yourself, Whatever we have heard done in Capernaum, do also here in your country. In other words, Capernaum that they referred to was actually a base where he did most of his miracles. Praise the Lord. Where our Lord Jesus did what? Most of his miracles. And he went on to say, Assuredly, I say to you, no prophet is accepted in his own country. But I tell you truly, and then he went on to talk about Elijah, and Elisha. Now, what happened in this case? He said, in all of Israel, were there, was there not a widow that God would have sent Elijah to to assist him or to, 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 to have an experience that will come? I mean, we know the story in Second Kings. And they knew that story. You see, knowledge can actually cause you to make positions or take positions against the grace of God. When you think you know, you have come to a point where you begin to pitch yourself against God's grace. Because you don't know all about God yet. <laughs> and I doubt if anybody can. No one. But the truth is, grace for grace was said about Jesus in that John chapter 1, verse 16. When they heard all that he had said, I mean, concerning the widow, the experience between Elijah and the widow, right? What happened? She was, uh, uh, what do you call it now? Having some form of uh, prophetic word given to her. And it was like, she was like, ah, prophet, this is what I have. Uh -uh. We can't have, we can't share. It's not, it's not shareable. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But then, according to the word, do as I have told you. And then there was a miracle. Right? Yes. And for Elisha, with respect to Naaman the leper, he said, was there I mean, no other leper in Israel was healed in that season. Amen? Amen? But Naaman experienced grace. Now, Jesus was pointing out to, to them that, see, these two people, they experienced grace even though they were outside of the commonwealth. They were what? Outside of the commonwealth. They were not Israelites. They were not Jews. 
They didn't have any part to the Abrahamic blessing. But then, they still experienced grace. He was only using that to buttress what he had said earlier. That a prophet is not accepted in his own country. And truthfully, Capernaum was not a Jewish settlement, so to speak. You had more of Grecians there. You have more of people who are not uh, Hebrew there. I mean, a lot of miracles took place there. The Bible records it. And several of these testimonies, you will wonder, why is it that those who were not Jews were the ones experiencing it? Ten lepers were healed. Only one came back to say thank you. Only one leper recognized the grace over the Lord Jesus Christ. He was a Samarian. Praise the Lord. The centurion, he was a Roman. Everyone that Jesus recognized having great faith, they had nothing most of the time to do with the commonwealth of Israel. And we all, in quote, are in that category. Till date, Judaism still has trouble believing that the Messiah has come. And each time, each time they have uh, the Lost Supper, and of course we would, today the communion is set. They will put a chair, an empty chair, on the table, expecting that the Lord Jesus will visit them and come and sit down with them. Praise the Lord. Grace to them had not been fully opened up. They've not fully accepted that grace. And this is instructive for us. In this time, I mean, sister, our sister who led the, the special number was saying that 2023 is coming early. And indeed it is. Grace has been made available. Whatever you would have to face within 2023, grace has already been what? Made available. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Looking at Jesus' choice of disciples, quite funny. He chose a task collector, somebody who is not, I mean... If you were going to choose, if, if I called Bro Jeffia now, I said, Bro Jeffia, amongst the workers in the church, we're not even talking about people who are outside, amongst the workers in the church, choose 12 disciples for yourself. You will be careful to choose the people that will align, who will support his ministry. Yes or yes? Bro Jeffia, cool. Why? Because he knows that if he chooses somebody like Judas, he will be betrayed. If he chooses the tax collector, now money matter. If he chooses Peter, Peter will be running his mouth. Praise the Lord. Jesus associated with people who were rejected. He will go to sinners' parties where they are playing buga. Praise the Lord. They didn't have buga then, but they had some form of music then. Amen? The Pharisees and the Sadducees will accuse him. Why do you sit and eat with sinners? In one occasion, the Lord Jesus said, the elderly don't need the doctor. It's only sick people. And it's only those who need help that need grace. They recognize that they are weak. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Dependence on God's grace, even when you feel that all is in place, is a very, very important thing that we must take going into 2023. I asked earlier, how many of us feel that we have moved from the beginning of the year till now? We have moved, we have improved, we have developed. 
and we raise our hands. But even where you have reached, the level you have reached, there is a tendency for the enemy to feel or make you feel that you have gotten there by some form of effort that you have made by yourself. That is, taking your eyes off the source of grace. Peter was asked to come on the water. Jesus called him, come. And the man, of course, we know Peter, agile, gallant. He jumped on the water and immediately saw that he was walking on water. The Bible says he began to sink. Amen? He began to do what? Sink. Why? Because he had taken his eyes off the source of grace. And he began to look at the waves. Now, looking at the waves was not the beginning. But feeling that he's actually walking on water, me, walking on water, me, Peter, was the beginning of his sight to the waves. So when challenges come, when trials come, when difficulties come, the fear that we have, the inadequacies that we think we have, is not really because of those challenges, those fears. They are really all around us. It's only when we put focus on them. Amen? It's only when what? We put focus on them. But the only reason why we will put focus on them is when we look at our own strength. There are issues needing or begging for uh, resolution in the country, economically, in various ways. Of course, we are moving into an election year. A lot of permutation and combination, like they say in mathematics. A lot of anal analysis going on. Analysis paralysis. Someone would say. And some people are obedient. Some people are emilocon. And some people are articulated. And people are taking sides. Why? Based on knowledge. Knowledge, who knows, what they will get or whatever. But our focus is not in any of them and should not be, but rather on our Lord Jesus Christ, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. We, as Metamorphosis Christian Center, obviously are in Nigeria. Yes or yes? So definitely we are affected by, or we are in the country when the elections will take place. We can't be taken out of Nigeria temporarily until after the elections that we are brought back. No, we are here. Nobody's jackpying. Nobody's jackpying. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. You know, that word jackpot, it is well. The truth is, <laughs> if you are not sent, then you are jackpying. But if you are sent, you are not jackpying. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Let's do that. that. Amen. 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 So he healed the sick. He did miraculous provisions, raising the dead. All the Bible passages that we read, I mean, they have all of this. Then the Great Commission. Oh, oh sorry. Yes, the Great Commission also. Grace was given as, uh, as regards that as well. Now, the grace of God does not conform to any, or conform rather, to any human measurement. We've talked about that in some way. But our Lord Jesus Christ is grace personified. In that book of Luke chapter 4, verse 22, it said, And they heard the gracious words coming out of his mouth. David has spoken about this earlier in Psalm 45, verse 2. Let's open to it quickly. Psalm 45, verse 2. We'll be ending shortly and then taking the communion. 
Psalm 45, verse 2. The Bible says, you are fairer than the sons of men. Now, this is prophetically David getting words from the Father concerning his son, Jesus. He said, grace is poured upon your lips. Therefore, God has blessed you forever. Amen. Grace is what poured upon your lips. Was it in First Thessalonians 5, uh, 5 17 now? Where we, are, we are encouraged to speak, our uh, uh, words will be laced with grace. Praise the Lord. That our words will be what? Laced with grace. Why? Because we are Christ's. We have become or becoming like Him. So, what He is or who He is, we should be. In representation, in speaking, in acting. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Of course, we've read John 14, sorry, John 1, 14 to 17. And we have said that grace is personified in Christ himself. And indeed, the full grace, that is verse 17, or no, verse 16. Let's open to verse 16 of that passage, John 1, 16. The Bible says that he is full of grace and truth. Or, okay, yes. And his fullness, we, we, we have all received. Uh -huh. Grace for grace, verse 17, talks about grace and truth. Yes, for the law of Moses was given uh, through Moses. Sorry, for the law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. And indeed, the privilege of receiving him when we believe this fullness of him, making us complete in authority and in capacity and in power, we have the opportunity to have it. So in other words, we cannot say that we are devoid of authority or capacity or power because we are in Christ. Why? Because grace comes from him and we have received him. So grace indeed has been showered over us. In the book of Colossians chapter 1, Colossians chapter 1 verse 19 to 20, and then chapter 2 verse 9 to 10, you can write that down. But let's focus on chapter 1 verse 19 to 20. Colossians 1, 19 to 20. The Bible says, For it pleased the Father that in him all the fullness should dwell, and by him to reconcile all things to himself, whether things on earth or things in heaven, having made peace through the blood of his cross. So in other words, we have come to a place where the fullness of God, in verse um, 9 of chapter, uh, chapter 2, the Bible was saying that he is the fullness of God, uh, the Godhead bodily. In other words, when we say we have, uh, uh, the Lord Jesus, we have received the Lord Jesus Christ, we have indeed received the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. And all that they represent. So grace showered upon us cannot be measured by our own human understanding. Because it is limited. At best, it is very limited. But depending on his grace, depending on the Lord Jesus Christ, depending on the Spirit's guidance, brings us to a place where things get done without us even thinking that, like Peter, am I the one walking on water? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. In wrapping up, we'll look at um, Apostle Paul in 2 Corinthians chapter 12. Apostle Paul, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, 7 to 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 12. 7 to 10. The Bible says here, And lest I should be exalted above measure by the abundance of the revelations, a thorn in the flesh was given to me, a messenger of Satan, to buffet me lest I be exalted above measure. Concerning this thing, I pleaded with the Lord three times that it might depart from me. And he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you. 
For my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I will rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in needs, in persecutions, in distresses. For Christ's sake, for when I am weak, then I am strong. Hallelujah. Apostle Paul here was describing a very, very uncomfortable situation in his life. To date, we don't know exactly what it is. Although some people or theologians have tried to decipher what it was. Amen? But one thing is clear. Paul knew this was coming from the devil. Amen? Paul knew what? This was coming from the devil. Why? Because one, we have learned that all good gift and perfect gift what? Come from above. James 1.17. It comes from God. So wickedness or evil cannot come from him. Amen? However, God allowed it. Where else did God allow something like this? Job. And there we will see clearly that indeed it was the devil that went to ask, ah, is it not because you are shielding this man from, from any form of art? Free him. And then let me, allow, let me be allowed to I mean, address him a bit. You will see how he will fall like a pack of cards. Is any one of us like that? Because the truth is this. Testings and trials will come. There is no gainsaying. There is no trying to quote it or sugarcoat it. And unfortunately, that was the, the, the uh, what do you call it, message sold out to many who became Christians. Oh, when you come to know Christ, all will be well. Things will go fine. You won't have any problem in the world. Was that what the Lord Jesus said? He said, men will hate you for my sake. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So here yeah, Paul was saying that he knows that this is from the enemy. And in God's sovereignty, he allowed it. Of course, the situation was used to bring a revelation of God's grace to Paul and then to us. Because if he had not asked, if he had not had that situation, we wouldn't have had this passage of scripture written. My grace is sufficient for you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So the revelation of God's grace is God's heart towards us. And Paul also knew by understanding that this had a purpose of humbling him. We have heard of so many ministers of God going through challenges and trials. Unfortunately, the uncultured and untaught are quick to just jump into, hey, they fall into sin. They've done this. They've done that. You see them on social media. We even have them, some of them, as friends. You hear that a man of God is having a challenge, and then they jump into comments because they are, they, they are lacking in knowledge. They have not grown. They are still babies. They make judgments. They make assertions. They make assumptions based on what they see, like the ordinary man. When they are even supposed to be praying that God will strengthen the person in these trying times. Paul severally will pray, uh, ask the people, pray for me. Was it that because he was falling away from faith? No. Because he was going through some form of challenge or trial. He was having difficulty moving ahead in doing the work of ministry. Here in this case, a messenger from Satan was buffeting him, was, I mean, assaulting him. And in spite of the understanding for Paul, it, I mean, it was uncomfortable he prayed and asked God three times. And God said, uh, Jesus said, Jesus spoke expressly to him that my grace is sufficient for you. My strength is made perfect in weakness. 
So I want to encourage one, every one of us today. Um, you alone and you alone know how deep the challenges had been in 2022. Some of us have te testimonies to share. Some of us don't yet. But your testimony will come. But let me let you know that this is the truth. His strength is made perfect in our weakness. He sees what you are going through, especially because of your faith. Because you don't want to uh, falter. You don't want to yield to, the, to what the enemy wants you to do. You don't want to take the other option. Because indeed, there are options. Yes or yes. Standing in faith is a resolute, hard-lined position. Whereby, if you cannot, or if you are not strengthened to stay there, what you are going through will blow you away. And His grace is what He has said is sufficient. The Lord Jesus being the atmosphere around you, His presence with you, His help for you. I mean, Jesus' response to Paul was very clear. He said, though you are going through this, my own interpretation, I am aware and will be with you. John 16, 33 says something. He said, Jesus said, in this world, you will go through trials, many tribulations, but be of good cheer, for I have overcome. And because, he didn't say you have overcome the world. He said, I have overcome the world. In other words, I have gone through it. And I have given you the opportunity to say you are more than a conqueror. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So Paul did not withdraw his zeal in this. And I want to encourage somebody here. Within the trials, within the situations, don't withdraw your zeal. Don't withdraw your zeal. Were you part of workforce before? Were you doing one thing or the other for the, for the Lord before? Were there some covenant or commitment that you had with the Lord? Don't because of the challenge that you are going through, draw back. Don't say God understands because the devil also understands. Give your all despite the challenges. Give your all. Give your all. Praise the Lord. God has assured us of his grace being sufficient for him, for us rather. In situations of infirmities, I mean, Paul mentioned it there. And Romans chapter 8, verse 35, Paul, um, yeah, Paul said, what can separate us from the love of God? Can trials, can tribulations? No. The love of God remains sure for us. So even in that, the devil will want you to feel that, the, I mean, God does not love you. That's why he hasn't done this or done that or giving you answers to your prayers. But that is not the situation. That is not the truth. God loves you. God cares about you. But well, one thing that that will bring, which Paul also recognized, going through trials and tribulations, is character development. We talked about this sometime in the past, over the course of this uh, faith series. We talked about our trials and tribulations bringing us to a place where our character is developed. We are going through the process. James talked about this in James chapter 1, verse um, I think that's verse uh, 4, or 2 to 4, rather. It's a refinement process. Where at the end of the day, it is not, be, I mean, it is not a, a function of what you get. Amen? It's not a function of what? What you get, but who you have become. If God would be answering all our prayers then we'll be at best babies. Why? Because that's what babies get. They get answers to prayers. Food. Yeah, yeah. Then they get food, right? They cry again, then you check whether they are pulled on their diapers and you change them. And then they are smiling again. Or they want a toy. They cry. You give it to them. Everything they want, you give it to them. 
My wife showed me the status of someone yesterday, and this man, sorry, this woman with her daughter were in a plane. They sat, I think um, the window seat should be A. And then B and C was where they sat, seat B and C, close to this man, sitting on A. The window seat was A. And the woman was talking to the man, sorry, sir, please, can you allow my daughter to sit by the window? Anytime we go on plane, she just loves it. And it comes out down and all of that. The man was eating, of course, very big in size. He was eating. I just looked at her. <laughs> what he said was very funny. He said, woman, it's not going to happen. Tell or teach your daughter that in life, you don't always get what you want. And the woman was like, you really mean that? I mean, he was saying to, her, to him, rather, are you for real? You can't allow her? No, but what he said is true. Children will always want their way. I was telling my wife, I said, the man is correct. The woman should teach her child to calm down, to be content with what she has. Character development will take place from there. Praise the Lord. What God intends through trials, through tribulations, is for us to grow. It's for us to grow from being babies. So when trials come, when challenges come, when tribulations come, when there is a contention at home, when your business is not going well, when people are having to challenge you on every and anything, for things that you did not do or things you even did in the right way, the Lord is with you. But what he wants more than anything is not to save you out of that situation, but to help you to grow. And his grace is available. The Lord Jesus, for that reason, went to the cross. In the Garden of Gethsemane, he had his own experience. One would think that, ah, the Lord of glory. I mean, it must have been easy for him to go to the cross. But thank God that that story was captured. We could experience his humanity in that story. What did he say? He said, Father, my prayer is, can this cup be taken away from me? Not my will, but your will. That is a submitted man. Our Lord Jesus was submitted to the Father's will in that posture. But then he still felt what you and I will feel when we are in pain. He knew what he was going to do was going to be excruciating. I mean, crucifixion. Where they will put nails in both his hands and then his feet. And he will be hung on a cross and eventually he will die. He experienced death. Praise the Lord. Let's bow down our heads. And let's reflect on all that we have heard. For you, I do not know where it affects you. It might be that the challenges that you've gone through within the year have been such that your faith wavered strongly. You felt like giving up. But thank God for God. But the truth is, with each passing day, the challenges will still come. It's not yet hahuru. It's not yet freedom at last. That will come when our Lord Jesus returns. But while we are still here on earth, Jesus said we will experience trials and tribulations. But like he told Paul, my grace is sufficient for you. Grace has been given to us in the Lord Jesus Christ. 
He went to the cross. He died. He was buried. He rose on the third day and he ascended. But before he did all of that, he had a time with his disciples. And it is instructive for us. He said, as often as you do this, that is the Lord's Supper, the communion, do it in remembrance of me. The essence of what Jesus said was remember the things I taught you, what you are about to, to partake of, and the fact that my body and my blood were given for you. The blood was shed, my body was broken for you. As he shared the bread amongst them. That is, he died. The essence of the Lord's Supper for us is to have a fellowship with him, a communion with him, a relationship with him, stronger than ever before. Each time we take it. He said, as often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to partake of the body, of your body and your blood in these emblems. We sanctify them for that purpose. And we ask, O oh Lord, that the grace that you have released to us as a result of all that you did and all that you connote, who you are, we receive by faith. And we become all that you have called us to be. The things that you have spoken of concerning us for the rest of the year 2022 and as we move into 2023, we receive grace. We receive grace that every single one of them we will not falter because we are dependent in our weakness on your grace that is our strength. Father, we bless your name. We worship you, Lord. We know, O oh Lord, that help has been provided to us by your death and your resurrection. You can go ahead. Help has been provided to us by your death and your resurrection. And our lives are in your hands for your use. Apostle Paul was serving you. Me. Even at that, he had trials and tribulations. Meaning that even while serving you, we will go through stuff. Help us not to give up. Help us not to give up. Amen. By the fact that we are taking this communion today, we receive help from you. We receive strength from you. We receive, Lord, grace from you. In the various expressions that it comes. Because indeed, the Bible says, that you are the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And the fullness of grace is in you. We are partaking of your body. We are partaking of your blood. In remembrance of all that you have done and who you are to us. We are saying, Lord, we are one with you. We are saying, Lord, our lives are yours for your use. We have learned that grace is in line with purpose. Your own purpose for our lives. Lord, we ask for your help. We release ourselves to the purpose for which that you have come to us. Bringing us into awareness that we are your workmanship. Created in Christ Jesus for good works which you have predetermined and preordained that we walk in. The abundance of grace for resources as well, we receive. Because that was part of the dimensions you walked on, or walked in while you were here on earth in the, in the physical flesh. That nothing was difficult for you with respect to resources. Yes, people hated you. People did all sorts to you. But resources was not a difficulty for you. As you needed it, you asked the Father, and it came to pass. Lord, we ask that as we serve you, as we give ourselves to you, our all to you, with respect to the resources needed 
to do what you have sent us to do. We receive grace in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Glory be to your name, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Let's take the bread and then the cup. Thank you for your word that has come to us, Father. We pray, O oh Lord, that indeed the fruit will abide. Your desire is to continually prune us to bear more fruit. And this comes in forms of challenges or trials or situations that come our way to refine us, to make us pure as gold. We ask for help that we discern accurately always to know what is going on and then seek for your help and grace. Not to take positions that are against the process and jump out of the process. Thank you, Lord, because your spirit is with us to guide, to teach, to comfort, to lead, to bring help to us. Father, we bless your name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed.